Okay, part two. Wow, what a messy board that got at the beginning. This is part two. Continue on. Yes, I I was so busy. I, I this is a busy time I'm hitting right now, so I wasn't able to do the part two yesterday. <sighs> and I don't know. We'll see how much more I can do of it today. But this is kind of like you you'll remember before this the buffer lessons. There were so many videos, and then there was only like one assignment. Well, this is also going to be similar. Um, whenever I finish all these videos, maybe now or maybe one more video, then you'll be able to do the worksheet there. But anyway, okay, so we did, we, I had done, when I last saw you, I had done this, the curve. I showed you the, the initial point. Then I showed you the when 10 milliliters were added and then equivalence point, seven. Looks like that. And then it says, what will be the pH after all the um, 200 milliliters of, of has been added? Okay, so if you've added all 200 milliliters of NaOH, well then now, let's just see how that's going to work. I could start off in my little BCA. This is letter D. Again, I can take advantage of the chalkboard and just erase the numbers. I still have O100. So we, we pretend in the beginning you had O100 HNO3. Okay? And um, let's see. We know now we're going to add 200 milliliters of NaOH. Yeah, they're telling you all 200 are going to be added. So how many moles are we going to be adding? Okay, take that part away. How many moles of NaOH? So 200 milliliters of NaOH. So this is a good, one thing good about this problem in this chapter is you see we're suddenly reviewing all the molarity chapter from last semester. You're like, oh no. So if I've got um, one, 200 milliliters of NaOH and the molarity of it is 0.100. Remember, I would always tell you, circle the molarity. What does that mean? 0.100 equals one liter. 100 mole equals one liter. That's only true for NaOH. So 0.100 moles of NaOH for every one liter. And 200 times 0.100 divided by 1,000 is 0.02. And then we got more into zeros to put on it. 0. 0.0200 moles. Let me see. I wrote it small and my chalk is going I'm trying to get my get my money's worth out of this chalk, okay? <laughs> 0. 0.02. Yeah, that's right. This is how many moles of NaOH were added. 200 milliliters. So 0. 0.0200 moles were added to 0. 0.0100. Remember in the beginning we had 50 milliliters of 0. 0.200 molar. Okay, so we figured that out in the previous problem. That was 0. 0.0. That is correct, right? Yeah, 50 over 1,000 times 0. 0.200. Yeah, 0. 0.0100 moles of that. Now, subtract. These are zero. Subtract the limiting reagent, BCA, stoic box. So that's a smaller one. And so you have 0. 0.0100 NaOH, no HNO3. And those are going to be, well, be a plus. If you cared about it, and you know, it's interesting because you could actually do um, stoichiometry problems this way. The only thing is, why I'm kind of reluctant to teach that like earlier in the year, is because if you put a 2 and a 1, or 2 and a 1, or any, any a 3, then remember the change is always going to have to match what you see on the, on the, um, the stoichiometry. And so that's why I'm kind of reluctant to always to teach that earlier in the year. I just say do it for these kind of problems, titrations. Okay, so anyway, this is, you end up, at the end of the reaction, again, you have, you know, sodium nitrate not going to affect it. Water's not going to affect pH, not going to affect pH. But this will, so how do you find the pH when you're 0. 0.0100 moles of NaOH? You'll find the pOH, okay, first. So remember um, the molarity of NaOH, does it fit down here? I guess I can do that. NaOH, the new molarity, I'm sorry, the solution at the end will be basic. We know that, basic. And the molarity, I can do it right here, I guess. NaOH bracket, molarity is moles per liter equals 0. 0.0200 moles. Let me put a line to kind of not... Mixes up 0.0200 moles of NaOH 
and you got to divide by the volume. Now, what is your volume? Always think about what is your volume now. You started with 50 milliliter, you added 200, so it's 250 milliliters. But then molarity has to be in liters, so 250 over 1,000 will be the, now, now that's the liter. So 0 0.0200 moles over 0 0.02 divided by 0.250 is 0 0.0800 molar NaOH. So in the end, that's the molarity of the NaOH. And so 0 0.0800. Now, to find the pH, I'll first find the pOH and then subtract from 14. Okay, so since it's basic, pOH will be negative log of the NaOH. Since there's only one OH, again, if this was Al, OH3, well, but even then, that's not even soluble, really. But still, if it were, if there were three OHs, you'd have to multiply that by three. But well, there aren't, and I don't expect that to happen. If it could, if it did happen on the AP, it, it would, I'll tell you who it would be. It would be camel with straw on his back. Either calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, BaOH2, or um, SrOH2. Those are the only three that could possibly do that, but I don't think they're going to do it. AP seems to always use NaOH or KOH. That seems to be it when they're doing these problems. Okay, so anyway, negative log of 0.0800. You will assume the hydroxide concentration equals NaOH. I mean, OH negative equals NaOH. Assume that. You don't have to write that down. Though. You don't have to write it down, but... It might be a good idea. It wouldn't hurt if you, to, you know, to say that a little bit. That's what we're doing. 0. 0.0800 log negative is 10. No, it's 1.10. 1. 1. Yeah, 1.10. Yeah, three sig figs. Actually, there's three sig figs there, so 1.097. All right, remember three after the decimal. Now, that's your POH, so 14... Minus 1.097 will be your pH, 12.90. Now, this is kind of interesting because as far as I know the equation of subtraction, you can only go two decimals. So it, even though you got the 7 there, your pOH, you can put that, but your pH, you have to put 12.90. Yeah, but you'll be okay. You, you would not get counted off if you put 12.90. I mean, it said one more number there. Okay, so what would that... Again, remember the idea is they could ask you this on a on a AP to graph something. So when how much did we add of NaOH? We said when two hundred are added, and you know what? I don't really even have it on my graph. <laughs> but when two hundred are added, the pH is now almost 13, 12.90. So let me try to come over this way and do it. So there's one hundred. I mean, two hundred will be off the chart somewhere, I guess. But we can just pretend it's well. I'll put it where it would be. 100, it, it'll probably be right about here. At 200, it's 12, almost 13. So a little bit below 13. That would be it. But I can tell you this pretty much going to be like that. Pretty straight line. I mean, it will be curving. Uh-oh. And then, then it'll be pretty much, pretty much straight down to there. Oh, my. Am I going to... Oh, there it is. I'm back. My ink was gone. So remember I told you the basic shape of this. Ah, oh, basic. Ha-ha. Uh -huh is kind of like that, zig, kind of like a line, a little bit diagonal, and then you, you come over there and you go up there. It'll be more curved, but that that's pretty much what you're going to see, okay? And you'll know, hey, I started with what? Low pH and acid, and I ended with a really high number base, so, oh, I must have added a strong base to a, to a strong acid, especially because you know about this line being almost straight up. It'll be diagonal because there'll be a There'll be a halfway point, the 7. Now, it says here, what is the pH after 10? Oh, no, no. What is the pH? No, no. <laughs> here I go. Sketch a titration curve. Indicate equivalence point, acid, base region, and neutral region. Okay. So, well, that's equivalence point is right there, 7. That's equivalence point. Then you have your acid range will be all of this, all of this area. And then your base range will be all of that right there. And, and your neutral range, did I put neutral region? Well, right around that, all that, all of that area right there. Okay, 
There it is. So we showed you a strong acid, strong base. Now I could also start with a strong base and, um, and do the same problem and add the HNO3 to the NaOH, a strong base. And I can tell you that the curve, this curve looked like this, right? Pretty much. But if you added, um, if you started with a base and you add an acid, it'll be like that. Really high up and you can really low, low down. Sorry, that's got to be more of a almost straight, yeah, line. I don't want to get too curving because that's going to be the next one that you see, the next kind of graph. All right, so now I will go over the most important titration that they ever ask about on the AP, and that is when you add probably a strong base to a weak acid. Now they could also, they have also given you adding a strong acid to a weak base. But, um, oh, in fact, the next question, number two, I just put, how would you titrate strong base with a, um, with a weak, with a strong acid? And that's the one, the curve will just be, I mean, you don't have to even do the math of that. If you wanted to, you could get it right. You could, you could. That was the first graph, right? So the next graph will be just like, it'll just be like up here. I didn't do it too good of a job. I did better on the chalkboard. <laughs> well, something like that. It should be that should be that shouldn't be completely straight, but it'll be pretty pretty straight. But anyway, it'll look more like that. Okay. All right. Now let's do this one. Titrating a weak acid with a strong base. All right. This is the big one. Now, um, it says we have here. I hope my graph numbers are okay here. If they're not, I'll try to figure that out beforehand, but I don't know. I wish I had my notes from the past. All right, 50 milliliters of 0.10 molar acetic acid. So we have 50 ml. Uh, this time I'm going to write it HC2H3O2. It's titrated with 75 milliliters of, oh, and I forgot to put my molar, 0.10. 75 milliliters of 0.10 molar in AOH. Okay, drop wise, and they give you the Ka for acetic acid. Now, for this one, it says, okay, so if you're doing a strong acid or a strong base, which I did a moment ago, you need really, you really only need to draw three points on your graph. The pH before you add anything, the pH at new at um, equivalence point, and also the pH at the very end. Oh, and I forgot to show you an equation that can help you get the volume. I know I was going to do this on the last video, but I forgot. But you've seen this before. M1V1 is M2V2. Well, as long as you're using acids that are a one-to-one -one ratio, MAMAVA equals... Mubvub. What does that mean? The molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid will equal the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. If they're a one-to-one -one ratio, and all of these are one-to-one -one ratios, when they're not one-to-one -one ratio, then you got to put, um, you got to add in the moles on each side of that. And I'm not even going to bother showing you that right now. We're not going to be doing that, okay? But um, what you do is, like on the problem before, if I put in the volume, well, I can do it here, and I will do it later. If I put in the volume of the, of the acid, okay, 50 milliliters times its molarity, and I put in the molarity of the NaOH, 0.10, this will tell me equivalence. To find the volume at equivalence point. So in other words, how much NaOH, do I, even though it says we've got 75, listen, we're not going you know, to really think about that number. We're going to be adding it one drop at a time to 0.10 molar HC2H3O2. One drop at a time. So how much of this will I need to add to get to equivalence point? It's probably pretty easy to figure that one out in this problem. But anyway, you put in molarity and volume of the acid, and then we don't know the volume of the base. We're not going to use that volume yet. But how much will get me to equivalence point? I'll put in, the, put in its um, molarity there, and I'll, I'll solve it. 
So that's a shortcut. Instead of doing that long thing that I showed you before. I meant to, to tell you that earlier. But I'm going to definitely do it on this one. All right. And you'll see it pop up. Okay, so here we go. A, what is the pH before any base has been added? Okay, so as I told you, and I'm going to think, think back. If I'm doing the old one, the one I did yesterday or yesterday lesson, the strong base, strong acid, you only need to know what, what is the, the molarity before. I mean, the, I mean, the pH before, the pH after all has been added. And then at equivalence, and you know equivalence point is going to be a 7 pH for strong acid or strong base. The only thing you don't know is what volume will, will be used to get there. And I just showed you a shortcut to find the volume, okay? Well, for this one, you need a, another point, okay? And I'll show that to you in a moment. But first, you need the pH before any acid has been added. Okay. Any base has been added. Sorry about that. So what is the pH... At, at the very beginning, all you have is 0.10 molar acetic acid. You got 50 milliliters of it. So what's the pH? Well, guess what? We've already been doing this. Um, I guess I'll do it with water. Oh, boy. Can I fit my ice box? I can just barely get it. It's an ice box. And all you do is you say, okay, you're starting off. You don't have any base yet. So you just have 0.10 molar. And zero acid, zero conjugate, minus x, plus x, plus x, 0.10 minus x, 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 Ka expression. And so what they do, as I told you, on AP, this might be a question. This could be the first part of a, of a question, but this might be the bulk of the question, actually. You write the Ka expression, you do the ice box, and then they're going to say, now if we add this much NaOH to it, what will the new pH be? And show it on the Tyrosine curve. So these problems, they all build. They start with the ice box, and maybe write the equation or write the ice box, write the, um, the Ka expression, and then 1.8 and solve. 10 to the negative 8, 5 to the negative 5, sorry, is x times x over 0.10 minus x. And so 1.8... 10 to the negative 5 is x squared, approximately, oh, and I didn't say the word, but assume x negligible. And make it big so they can circle it so they can see it. That is x squared over 0.10. So um, I'll just do all the math. We won't jump around. 1.8, 10 to the 5 times 0.10, square root, 1.34, 10 to the negative 3, actually 1.3. 10 to the negative 3 molar is x. All right, now that tells me um, that tells me the molarity of the H3O. It's x. That equals x. And I, I actually, I, this is how they do it on the AP2 equals H3O plus. So right there, you've told them. Hey, I found H3O, and that might already get you a couple of points. You probably get a point for having that, maybe a point for that. Usually I'll say either that or that will be one point. They'll probably give you one or the other of these, but usually they make you write that one. That'll be a point. Um, then solving for X here, that will get you a point right there, and then getting the pH. Knowing that that's H3O, and then the pH to begin with is negative log of H3O plus, which is negative log of... 1.3, 10 to the negative 3 molar. And that's 2.26 figs after the decimal, 89, 2.89. So before you do anything, your pH is 2.89. And we have, we've not, we've not added anything yet. So I'm going to come over here and put my first point, 2.89 before I've added anything so almost three, I'll put it really close there. So almost three, 2.89, does that show up? Yeah, that's my first, yeah, that's my first point. Okay, now let's find, B says, what's the pH after 10 milliliters has been added? Okay, guess what? We don't really have to do that one. If you wanted to, if you really want to make a great, great curve for pH, you could do after five is added, 
10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. You can do every calculation. Let the whole class all, you know, get in groups, do that, and then graph all the points. You could do that, but you don't. Just to get a, to get a general idea of a titration curve, first you need the beginning pH. Then you also need the final and you need equivalence. And then you'll need one other thing too. I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's go on to C. We'll, still, we'll skip B. You can do it if you wanted. But now starting with B and C, we're skipping B. Now we're doing the stoic box. So NaOH plus acetic acid gives you sodium acetate and water. And it says, what is the pH? Um... Guess what? We're not doing C. We're not doing C yet. We're going to we're going to skip C also after 50 milliliters had been added. Oh no. I'm sorry. 50 Okay. We are going to do C. We are doing C. Okay. C they should have said what is the pH at equivalence point, okay? Oh, no, it, it is say that. Oh, I, I just read it. Okay. I saw the 50 there, and I was getting confused about it. After 50 has been added, I thought what it said, which is the same as that. But, oh, well. Okay, here we go. So here's what you, what you have. You're starting out BCA, and to begin with, how many moles of acetic acid do you have? Okay, you got 50 milliliters of 0.10. So we got to go over here. 50 milliliters of HC2, H3O2. I know you got to just have this memorized from chapter four. Milliliter to liter. I mean, you don't have to do every step like this, but probably a good idea. And then it's 0.10 molar, 0.10 moles of H for one liter of HC2, H3O2. So that is. <clears throat> 50 times 0.10 divided by 1,000 is 5 times 10 to the negative 3. And I'm going to write that. It is it is 5.00 10 to the negative 3. But just to make the subtraction easier, 0. 0.00500 moles is what you have. 0. 0.00500 moles. In fact, I ought to write that in green or something. I've got another chalk color. Just so we don't have to... I'm going to probably keep that number up there. Just remember, this is how we got it. 50 milliliters times 0.10 divided by 1,000 gives you 0 0.00500 moles. A lot like what we had last time. Okay. I'm just double checking it all the way because I always, you know, if when we're in class, people can do it along with me and tell me if I do some crazy thing wrong. All right, so now here's an interesting thing. At equivalence point, how much do we need to add? Now, it's kind of easy to see in this question, but this is what I didn't tell you. First of all, we need to, we know this. At equivalence point, the moles of this and the moles of this are stoichiometrically equal. That means one mole of that to one mole of that. All right, so since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, that means I'm going to have 0500 moles at equivalence point. At equivalence point, the moles are equal. You might want to write that down. At equiv. Well, uh-uh. Don't write the moles are equal. They're, stoic, they're, in, they're in ratio. At equivalence point, moles are in um, ratio. Uh, mole, yeah, in ratio. So one to one, one to one. If this had been a two there, then that would mean I'd have to double that number. Okay? If that had been a two there, then I'd have to put half of the number here. That would be only, you know, two to one, 0.025. Okay? But anyway, because that would be double. That would be double, and that would be X. Okay? The, the amount to start off with. So you've got to think about that for a minute. At equivalence point, that's the moles. Okay? Now, what's the other thing? Is what to find what's the volume at equivalent. I'll, I'll do that in a minute. Okay, so first let's, let's figure this out. 0500, 0, 0500, 0, 0. All right, the limiting reagent is just the same. There is none. 0500 for both of them. You subtract the same. They're both, this, nothing is smaller. 0 and 0 plus 0. 0500 and plus 0. 0500. 
So you have water left over. You have no strong acid. You have no weak at no, no strong base, not a strong base system. You have no weak acid, not a weak acid system. You have no you have water, but that didn't do anything. Uh, what is this? What is this? You have a conjugate of a weak acid, which makes makes it a base. A conjugate base equilibrium right there. C2H3O2 negative one. So we're gonna find that in a minute. We're gonna find the pH in a moment. But um, let's first find out. Let me go on and do this right now. Just, we'll get it. Volume of NaOH added. What is the volume of NaOH added for C? For C. For C, the volume added. Okay. We know we had to add 0,500 moles to match that. But the volume, I told you the shortcut, is to use this. Mava Mubvub. The molarity of the acid was 0.10 moles per liter. The volume was 50 milliliter. And guess what? We can keep it 50 milliliter. I don't know if you remember this from chapter 4, molarity. The, the molarity of the base is 0.10 also. So that makes math easier, but I want to still show you, because sometimes they're not going to be, you know, mole per liter. Sometimes they're not going to be um, equal numbers. So the volume, obviously, the volume's going to be the same, 50. But let me just show you this. We're going to solve what volume had to be added to give you 0.0500 moles. Now, remember, this is in milliliters. So my answer will also be in milliliter. There's no need to, to, to um, worry about... Dividing by a thousand to get moles, because I could also divide this side by a thousand, this volume by a thousand, and see if I divide that by a thousand, I'd get liters. This divide by a thousand is liters. You don't have to worry about that at all. Just don't even worry. Molarity times milliliter will give you the new molarity. Uh, uh, well, the, the I'm sorry, the added molarity times the milliliter there, and so we know it's going to be fifty again. So that's going to cancel out. So yeah, it's fifty. Fifty is the volume of the base. So 50 milliliters are added. And that might be a problem on my graph. Yeah, it is because it goes off the graph. So we'll, I'll figure that out in a minute. We'll, we'll figure out something with that in a second. Okay, all right, here we go. So we know I've added 50 milliliters, but now what is the pH? Ah, okay, so what is the pH at equivalence point? Okay, at equivalence point, you now have a conjugate of a weak acid. You have this, which will react with water, and what will it do? It's going to make HC2H3O2 and OH negative. I guess I'm going to run into this. I'll just do it that way. Okay. You have a base. Remember, it, it is a conjugate base. What is the, okay, so we'll do an ice box for that. What? Yep, ice box. Actually, an I, I, ice, I was almost want to call it an icy box, but an I, 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 icy box. So the what is the moles? 0. 0.0500. And what was the volume now? What is the total volume at that point? Okay, actually, we had to figure that out. So you had 50 of, of, um, of acetic acid. You added 50 of NaOH. That means you have 100 milliliter, which is over a thousand, so 0.100 mole, um, 0.100, and then these will be zero in your ice box. So now, 0 0.0500 divided by 0 0.100, 0 0.50, 0 0.500, ice box, and then zero and zero, okay? Is that right? Yeah, I got 100, 50 plus 50 is 100, 100 milliliters divided by 1,000 is 0 0.1. 0 0.05 divided by 0.1 is 0.500. Yeah, okay. All right, so now to do the ice box, minus X plus X and plus X. Sorry, I'm not lining it up so good because I'm kind of running into that. 0 0.500 minus X, X, and X. KB will equal on this side... HC2H3O2 times OH negative over C2H3O2 negative. What is the KB math value? Can you remember that? Uh-oh. 
Well, they told you in the beginning, remember, Ka times Kb is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So the Ka of Hc2H3O2, they gave you acetic acid times a Kb of C2H3O2 negative conjugate base equals that number. The acid one was 1 1.8, 10 to the negative 5. The Kb of the uh, conjugate base is 1, point, 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1 1.8, 10 to the negative 5. 5.6, 10 to the negative 10. 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Does that show up on the... Oh, it actually showed up as messy as it was. So you have to go somewhere off the side to find the KB. And on the AP, lately, they kind of... If they give you a problem that involves this kind of thing, they give you a point saying, what is the KB for C2H3O2? Okay? They might even say, write the equation for that. So that might get you a point, and that might get you a point. So we'll go over here with the math. 5.6... 10 to the negative 10 equals, and I'm going to put in xx and then over 0.500 minus x. Now, because it's going to be a mess, I'm just going to erase all this stuff. So now we're doing an ice box to find the pH. So what I'll do here is I'll um, assume x is negligible. Now, I'm going to say 5.6. You know what? I'll just go up here and make it easier for me because I'm running out of space. That's approximately going to be that over 0.500. So, assume makes it negligible. So, 5.6, 10 to the negative 10 times 0.5, and then get the square root. And it's 1.7, you know, 10 to the negative 5 equals x. Okay, 5.6, 10 to the negative 10, times 0.500, get the square root, 1.7, 10 to the negative 5, molar. And what is x? Okay, very important. I'm glad I, I said that and did it and checked it before I jumped myself. x is OH. Uh-oh. So, how am I going to find the pH? Well, first, I'm going to have to find the pOH, and then subtract it from 14. So, <clears throat> POH is negative log of 1.7, 10 to the negative 5. And it's 4.78. So, 14 minus 4.78 POH gives you 9.22 pH. So, now I can finally make another point on the graph, and I'm going to have to figure out, oh boy, what, I'm, what am I really going to figure out here? Well, when all of it is added, 7, that would be 125 milliliters. So, okay, here's what we're going to do. On this messed up graph paper, I'm going to change the number. Instead of 10, 20, 30, 40, it's going to be 50, 100, 150, 200. Okay? we got to change the numbers. So it's going to be 50, 100, 150, 200. It's numbered bad. What a mess. Ah. Okay. So anyway, here it is. When I have added 50 milliliters, uh, the pH will be 9.22. Wow, this graph is going to really be not too great. Oh, boy. I should have made 50. Wait a minute. Can I go 50? Then 100? No, that wouldn't be. It'll run off the graph there. Oh, well, we'll just do it there anyway. So 9.22 is right about up here in 50. So it'll look about like that. Now, the interesting thing is, i got to show you another point before we can continue, so I can't do anything yet. Normally, I could have it stretched out a little bit more to see this, but it's not going to just jump up. You're going to see it's going to kind of curve up a weird way. It's going to make a little curve. I don't know if it's going to. I don't know how it's going to look. I might have to redraw it down here, but that's where it would be anyway. For now, we got the two points. Okay, now 
Um, that'll be, I'll have to continue on in the next section. So, wow, I know it takes some more videos, but I, um, I wish I could figure out, if I could figure out a way to redo the numbers, 50, I can't do it by hundreds, or, or, um, 100, because it goes to 125. Well, we don't really have to have, no, I don't know, I'll think about it, but anyway, I'll see you guys, all right.